Hi guys, today I got a question from somebody on my blog that is a good lead into the video I've been planning on making next anyway. So let's take a look at this question and I'll answer it and go over it. And it's a good educational uh, question to go over, a good educational discussion to have anyway. So let's take a look at this question here. It's from Lars and Lars asks, uh, the way I've heard, one thing I was wondering about, the way I've heard the greenhouse effect described to me is that if it wasn't for the greenhouse effect, the average global temperature would only be minus 18 degrees Celsius. But now thanks to the greenhouse effect, the temperature is plus 15 Celsius. I wonder where these numbers come from. The 18 minus C, I guess, is the same as the output that you're talking about. How is this measured? And 15 degrees C, where does that number come from? Okay, so those are all really good questions. So remember, let's just go back to this foundation of climate physics diagram. Remember, this is how they are starting off climate physics. We've seen uh, quotes from people, and my next video is gonna be demonstrating more textbooks and more references from websites and quotes that this is indeed the beginning, the starting point of climate science, and certainly the starting point of climate alarmism based on its greenhouse effect and vilification of carbon dioxide, the foundation of life. Strange thing to vilify. Um, so this is the beginning. This is the starting point of climate science. This is taught in geophysics classrooms around the world. And the active term here is this F, which is the energy from the sun. And then that's an absorptive factor, one minus A, but then it's divided by four. Now what that divide by four means, what it shows mathematically is that they're taking the input and they're spreading it over the entire surface area of the earth at once. That's what they're doing with the solar input. They spread it over the entire surface area of the earth at once. And it is that number there, that person is right, Lars was right. It's that number when you convert it to a temperature. So this is an energy flux density and you convert that to a temperature via an equation called the Stefan-Boltzmann law in physics that allows you to change to convert a um, energy flux density of light, of electromagnetic magnetic energy, into a temperature, into an equivalent temperature. And so that is indeed what that term is doing. So they are using minus 18C as the input. And so why are they doing that? So remember, if we go back to my diagram here, which I have created to show a more realistic, a reality-based model of how sunlight actually interacts with the Earth, you have a cross-section of sunlight falling on only one hemisphere of the Earth at a time, of course. This sunlight doesn't spread over the entire surface area of the Earth at once, as they do in climate physics. It just falls on the one hemisphere at once. And so it comes in at a very warm temperature and underneath the zenith, it's still extremely warm by the zenith. I mean, this, uh, this, this area on the surface directly underneath the sun. So that would be, you know, around the equator. It's quite warm. It generates the climate. It's quite hot. Even when you're pretty far north, like I am at 51 degrees latitude, it's still quite warm. And you go further north than that, it's still quite warm. It's still quite warm enough to uh, evaporate water and generate the climate and everything like that. Now, after that heat is transferred through the system, then obviously the whole Earth is radiating outwards residual heat or residual energy after this process, after it's absorbed energy from the sun. Now, when it radiates it out, it's radiating over a much larger surface area, then it intercepts light from the sun. So because the light transfers through the system as heat transfer, generating the climate, it then comes out over the entire surface area, but the entire surface area is larger than the input surface area and hence that light is diluted and diluted light has a lower temperature and that's what this value is here so when the energy comes out this is the average output this is your average out and that is equal to minus 18 degrees celsius so now you can see that what they're doing in climate science is they're taking this out and they're just saying well conservation of energy means we can exchange input for output now that's wrong because the input and output don't have the same density and density is what the density of light is the power of light and that's what's creating the climate this high intensity high density light is what comes in and is warm and high temperature and that creates the climate and the climate is the transfer of heat from that light through the system to this output and this output is cooler it's stepped down it's a lower in density the output is a lower density light and it's cooler light so these scientists what they're doing these climate physicists they're simply taking the conservation law of conservation of energy and applying it in in the most naive way possible the most simple-minded and non-realistic 
way possible that you can possibly imagine. They're taking this output and they're reversing it and they're using it backwards as the input. So they're actually reversing the entire direction of energy flow. They're reversing the entire direction of heat flow through this system. And so minus 18C is indeed the output of the Earth that is actually the temperature of the Earth when viewed in terms of its average out output radiation that is indeed the temperature of the Earth. The temperature of the Earth as seen from outer space is indeed minus 18 degrees Celsius. That is exactly what it is. It does exactly put out this much energy from its entire surface area on average. But of course the output is not the same as the input. Now they take the output and reverse it for input and they say that it should be minus 18 degrees Celsius everywhere on the world if that's what the input is. And of course it's not the input, it's the output, but nevertheless, this is what they're saying. They're saying that minus 18 degrees Celsius should be what you find everywhere on this earth. Yet the near surface temperature where these temperature monitoring stations are, they're about six feet off the surface or a meter and a half off the surface. So maybe that's four feet or five feet. So they're a meter, a meter and a half off of the surface of the ground and they record plus 15 C. So what the scientists do, the climate scientists do is they say that this plus 15 C is the measured average temperature of the earth. Now that's not accurate physics either because the atmosphere actually has depth here, doesn't it? The atmosphere has a depth. So this is the Earth's surface at the bottom of the atmosphere, and here's a column of atmosphere. This atmosphere actually has a depth. Now there's this phenomenon in the atmosphere called the adiabatic lapse rate, and that makes, and it's due to gravity, and that makes the bottom of the atmosphere be warmer than the top, and it makes the atmosphere has, have a distribution of temperature going from hottest near the surface to coolest at the top of the atmosphere, the top of the troposphere, which is about 18 kilometers in uh, 18 kilometers in altitude. Above that, other strange physics takes over. But this is the the uh, portion that we're actually worried about with the ideal gas laws applying. So the adiabatic lapse rate, which is an effect due to gravity and an effect due to rising and falling parcels of air, that forces the atmospheric column to have a distribution in temperature where it's warmest at the bottom and coolest at the top. So necessarily then think of an average. What is an average? An average is, in the simplest terms possible, the middle of a sequence. So if you expect the atmosphere to have a sequence in temperature, which we do because this is basic physics, you can derive this equation, maybe I'll show you how to derive it one day, but this is the lapse rate, the equation for the lapse rate, and it simply shows that based on very fundamental physics, the atmosphere has to have a distribution in temperature. It has to. It's basic math, basic physics. The atmosphere has to have generally a distribution in temperature where it's warmest at the bottom and coolest at the top. So again, if something has to have a sequence and you also expect it to have an average, well then where is the average of that sequence going to be? Is it going to be at the bottom? No, of course not, right? Because that would totally violate what the idea of an average is. You would never find an average at the extremity of a range of values. The average has to be always found around the middle, right? So in fact, the average of the system is around five to six kilometers in altitude, and it actually has the temperature of minus 18 degrees Celsius. Now, if you go down from there, deeper into the atmosphere, the lapse rate makes the temperature of the air naturally increase. And then once you get to the bottom, you find this average of around plus 15 C. So what the climate scientists are doing is they're taking this output and they're saying, well, the output is minus 18 degrees Celsius. And we can use that as the input, which is of course wrong, but they're saying they can use that as the input. And therefore everywhere on the earth should be minus 18 degrees Celsius. And if it isn't, it's because of this idea that they've made up about a greenhouse effect. But of course you can't expect to find minus 18 C which is the average of the whole system at the hottest part of the system. Why would you think that you can find the minus 18 degrees Celsius average at only the infinitesimal slice of the system nearest to the surface where we already know that it's hottest, that it's supposed to be warmest, warmer than the whole rest of the atmosphere? 
that doesn't make sense to make that comparison. If you do make that comparison, then you have to say there's going to be a difference between the hottest portion of the atmosphere and the average of the atmosphere, and that difference is due to the lapse rate. That's what you do have to say. And not, but what they do, what the climate alarmists and climate scientists do, is say the minus 18C average should be found at the surface, even though that violates the definition of what an average is and where you should find an average. And then they say, because there's a difference, let's say that the difference is due to this term we're gonna invent and steal from a real greenhouse, and we're gonna call it a greenhouse effect, even though it's not how a real greenhouse functions, and it's where the climate creates itself. So they're reversing the output for the input, and this output could never create the climate. And so what they do to create the climate is have the climate create itself to match what the input can actually already do on its own. All right, so I hope that was helpful. So maybe I can uh, do it again a few more times to help make the point more clear. And have a good afternoon. Bye-bye.